K, Cleveland's best mix of R&B, Sam Sook Show, in the building, yeah, in the studio, in the land, the Portia Renee. Hey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. She's like, this guy is pumped. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. No doubt. Already, already. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on the album. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to have some fun here. We got a lot to talk about. Um, first of all, congrats on your career. Congrats with American Idol. You. Uh, you're getting so much on social media um, that, you know, the whole world is talking about you. Right. I mean, the world is talking about you, man. You're doing some amazing things. You can Thank sing. You. you can sing. Thank you. Not sing. <laughs> you sing. <laughs> Thank you. How, how does it feel to be in this place in your life? It feels, it's a very happy feeling. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, um, kind of like a reward for mm -hmm. the place I was right before. You know, mm -hmm. So. And and what what was that place? You, you were working to get in the business. Um, to kind of take us there before you know the American Idol. Well, before American Idol, um, I was married mm -hmm. um, to a military man, and things were really abusive. Mm -hmm. So I got out of the situation, and two months later, American Idol came. Mm -hmm. So um, after being married for five years. I finally got uh, the divorce finalized in November after American Idol. Mm -hmm. So every ever since then, things have been really nice. We 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 have we have uh, uh, queens who have been going through this who are listening right. now. Um, what advice would you give them? I mean, you were married five years, mm -hmm. and out of those five, was the whole five years being abusive? Well, uh, two of those, well, one of those five years, I was doing Idol. Mm -hmm. um, I was still legally married until uh, November, but yes, the whole marriage we were uh, I was I was being abused and to any woman in it, I would say, well, first I want to speak to the parents, well, not the parents, but the people around the, the victim or the survivor because a lot of times they feel really helpless because you know you don't really know what to do. you're you're sitting here watching this person right. being hurt. And you can't you can't really force them out of something because they'll just go back because you know uh, I, I went back mm -hmm. several times um, so uh, what I would say is to be the strongest support system that you can for them and don't don't necessarily get uh, frustrated with them if they don't leave right away just kind of but also be careful to to not get too too invested in it because mm -hmm. it can break your heart if you know if they, they, they yeah. decide to stay yeah. and to the person in it it really does come from a place within you have to like realize and come to terms with the fact that this is not the way it's supposed to be because mm -hmm. sometimes the mind tricks you and makes you think it is and that's why you went back that's why i kept going back i was like you know maybe it was something we always find a way to kind of blame ourselves for whatever's mm -hmm. going on if you're assaulted sexually, you're like, well, maybe I wasn't, you know, um, doing my job as a wife, so to speak. Or if you're hit or if you're uh, talked down on or cheated on, you're like, well, you know, maybe I deserve that because of this or that. You always, I always found a way to blame myself for whatever happened. Mm -hmm. So when I stopped doing that and I'm like, hey, God didn't put me on this earth to be hit and abused and talked down to and cheated on and all of that. That's not the way marriage was supposed to be. Right. I'm getting out. And a, a lot of times it has something to do with the way we, we grew up as well because I grew up around a lot of uh, Christians and a lot of uh, church folk. Turn the other cheek, daughter. God's right. going to bless you. Right, you know. And that's that's exactly what I had when I would talk to people. They'd send me to First and Second Corinthians you know, um, the holy wife makes the the husband holy or something like that. It says, um, like, Is there a verse in there that says, Thou should not beat her ass? Look, I, <laughs> no, I don't believe it. <laughs> but, you know. Um, it's in there, it's in there. Just don't say it like that. It, yeah, it, it. I think I think that was misinterpreted and that yeah. a lot of times people do use the Bible to be like, well, you got to stick through it. Pray for your husband and all of that. I mean, you can pray yeah, for I'm him, but pray court. for him. Right. Pray for him from afar. So uh, sometimes that's what you got to do. You got to love from afar. And when once I realized that 
I was like, okay. Now, I didn't leave when I realized that. Mm-hmm. But I started, you know, to kind of not accept things that I used to. And I mm-hmm. gra- it was a process. Yeah. What made it, um, what, what, what was the breaking point for me was when my daughter was born. So I didn't even know I could have kids. Mm. Um, and was I was told I was pregnant too. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Okay. So um, after I had her, uh, that's when I was like, okay, well, I can make excuses for myself and say I deserve this because of this and that, but I can't do that for an mm. innocent child. So um, I went into mother bear mode, and I'm like, she's not, she's not gonna witness this. She's not gonna experience this. Yeah. And the final straw. I had already been, you know, thinking about leaving and thinking of how, because the laws are really, you know, tricky. And now I had a kid, I can't just run away with her or I can actually go to jail for kidnap, Mm. even though I'm the mother. Uh, So the laws in Mississippi are really tricky. So I had to find a way to get out and take my daughter with me. So um, April 29th, uh, he tried to take my life. And he he tried to choke me to death. Uh, it was like two, three a.m. And uh, this is right that before American Idol. Right before American Idol. So I ended up calling the police, and they took him. And from then on, like it was, uh, it was kind of just like, where do I go from from now? Where do I go from here? And I was watching American Idol. Cause I always watched American mm-hmm. Idol. Um, the voice, I like singing right. shows. And Ryan was like, This is the last year and I had auditioned when I was sixteen. Yeah. Got a standing ovation from the stadium and I still didn't get through. So I was like, Well, I mean, I really have nothing to lose right now, so let me go. So I went and I stayed prayed up and I got yes after yes after yes after yes and it was a shock to me. Every yeah. time I was just shocked. I was like, Wow. How did you handle that? And and I applaud you and and, and God gave you strength. Thank you. How did how you know, what, what during that time, I mean, here it is, American Idol. Right. And you going through this divorce? Right. You, you, you I I kinda like um made myself I think I suppressed everything. I think I pretended in my mind that I wasn't going through that. Mm -hmm. And I just focused on American Idol. And how I know that that's what happened is because um, I was finding, when it came down to song choice, I was finding songs that I I love to hear on the radio Mm -hmm. that I was singing along to, blah, blah. And they had a show where America had to choose our songs. One of the songs that was chosen for me was Ready for Love Mm -hmm. by NDRE. And the other song that was chosen for me was No More Drama mm. by Mary J. Blige. So I I had a breakdown. It mm-hmm. was it was like, you know, everything came back at once. Right. I have, and when I, you know, it was it was a weird experience because I talked about my experience, but I talked from like third person mm-hmm. um, or put myself in third mm-hmm. person. I just kind of disassociated myself Mm -hmm. and um, I was always bubbly fun I'm always laughing so nobody would think but once they heard my story they're like wow but you're around here you know so when that week came I had a breakdown and I told Scott Brichetta I was like "Um, I I can't do that song because it's Mm -hmm. it's way too close to home like I'm I'm not going to make it through the song And he was like, just try it, just try it. Kept pressuring me, just try it. You need this moment. He was telling me I needed the song. I was mm-hmm. like, mm. so anyway, um, the first rehearsal we had on that song, the music started. Like the first beat, Ricky Minor and the band played the first beat, and mm-hmm. I just broke down mm-hmm. on stage. And they were like, you know what? Save it for the show. Because usually we have like, um, Choreographers come in to tell us, you know, maybe you should right. go here. Maybe you should. Yeah. They were like, "We just gonna let you do what you do. You need to have this moment." So I didn't practice the song the entire week. Wow. First time I sang that song was on uh, on stage and, song. in front right. of everybody, yeah. and it was re- it was organic. It was you know, whatever they saw, that's what yeah. it was, and. Um, I was really nervous. They were nervous too because you know how they showed the the short stories before. Right. So they showed me mine over and over and over again all week so that mm-hmm. I could kind of 
they didn't want me to be taken off guard. Uh, I was like, as long as you take my ears out, because if you leave my ears in, I'm not going to be able to make it. Right, so right, right. They accidentally <laughs> left my ears in. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> I heard the story. I heard myself crying and talking about, you know, what was going on. And uh, for those that were there live, they, I was just pacing this, the stage. And I was, I was like just trying to make sure I kept it together yeah. before. And all through the song, it was shaky moments and everything. Yeah. It was not my best vocal at all, but I couldn't help it because I was yeah. trying to just hold back. And luckily, I made it through the song, and then I had to break down afterwards. But yeah. um, that moment was a very... It was... Scott Pachetta was right on that, and I needed that moment mm -hmm. simply because I had been dealing with it a little bit in silence. Like... I've been talking about it on a not so deep level. Right, right. Um, and but that moment right. opened it up. It freed you. Right. You know. Right. You know. And um, it was also needed for me. It was. It was all you know God's plan because it was also needed for me because I still had the mindset like you know I'm the only one going through this right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, and when I had that moment, J Lo stood up. And she cried and she clapped and she was like, w I've been through that. We've all, you know, had, right. had situations like that. And that was a very just, it was a defining moment for me because I'm like, wow, J-Lo out of all people, you know. So uh, although it hurt my heart that someone like her had been through something like that, it also made me, it snapped me out of that yeah. weird mentality that I had of me being the only one. And that now you the strength for so many people. Right. You are the strength. Right. People hear your story, your testimony. Right. You know, they're, they're not just fans of the music, but of your life. You're like right. a hero to them. Right, yeah. right. And that happened, I just, I didn't expect that, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started thinking wow this is bigger than me because people started emailing me kids even mm. um, men women everybody mm. everybody that had been through something like that um i had some women email me saying you know because you did it um i think i'm gonna try and, and take my kids and leave mm. this year wow. wow so you know i was just like you know taken back and it it really put things in perspective for me and so i i after no more drama, you know, it it was no longer a competition to me. It was more like, now I know why I have to do this. Now yeah. I know why you gave me this platform. Yeah. You know, so. And so and so now here it is, you know, your CD is, is available for everybody. And, right. You know, you got you got the hits and uh, so when you're singing, when you you know some of the songs on the CD, were there moments where you 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 know got personal like the you know. No more drama. Maybe not with that situation, but oh, just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what yeah. songs are those? I had a no more drama moment on uh, Hideout. Mm -hmm. Hideout. And we took a... the After he comped it, he took a lot of the ad lib out. But um, it was that... That cry, that plead kind of kind of feel in Hideout. And uh, the lyrics are... I'm letting go. No, you can't stop me now. Mm -hmm. I break away because I found my hideout. That's yeah. that's the course. And like it, it, it was just when I heard the song, he was like, "What? You want this song? He really didn't understand." <laughs> I was like, "No, I'm I'm trying to tell you. Like every yeah. time I hear this song, I you know burst out into tears." Breathe was another one because um, breathe was it. It was it was personal to me because. Sometimes, in a weird kind of way, music is the only thing that helps me to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, I I was a, a victim of domestic violence, and now I suffer from PTSD. I suffer from severe anxiety. Mm -hmm. I suffer from rape trauma. So those those are the things that you know. It, it makes it hard sometimes to to just do the simple things. Right, to right. just get out of bed or to just you know want to go out and say I, I don't I don't really go out I'm in the house by like six every, yeah. every day <laughs> um you know my, my my evening is like sitting on the couch watching Little House on Prairie you know Little what you know yeah. about that hey I got all 204 what? episodes that's <laughs> straight old school old school Little House on the Prairie damn <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, no good times. Read. Look, I got good times. I got good times. The Jeffersons. Yeah, you know, little yeah. house on the That's old Dr. Paul. Look, but that, but those are some good. Those are some good shows. If I was if I was back in the day, I would have took Charles Ingalls from Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, hey, so so tell me about your tell me about home. Home. How how is that? Has it changed with your friends? Are they? I you haven't have been. Friends? I haven't been really. Yeah. I haven't been that much. Yeah. Um, been on the road. But it, it is different when I go back. I've gone back a, a couple times, and it's real different. Uh, good. Bad. I, different. It's good, okay. but it's weird. It's, okay. It's weird. Good, cause. So I do have a friend down there, Taisha, and we've been friends since high school. And you know, uh, she still treats me the same. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's nice. Her family kind of fans fangirls a little bit. My family more than any other family fangirls. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I get my hair, <laughs> I get my hair ready and get it done, and I put my makeup on and put get dressed, and they're like, when you pick your hair like that, like. It's La Portia Renee. Right. You're no longer <laughs> Portia. You know, I'm like I'm the same person. Right, 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 right. But it's 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 nice, and I have people that I've known from school that you know, um, I wasn't popular in school, so mm-hmm. you oh, know, they, the, you the, popular now, <laughs> right? They're gonna so want you to come to the, to the reunion. <laughs> you gotta perform. Yeah, I got invited yeah. to uh, the homecoming that was coming yeah. up. I felt that. Was, yeah, I was like, what? Mm-hmm. So everybody, anyway, yeah, everybody who you know, who, who <laughs> didn't know, you know, you're not. yeah, we say they all knew me. Time. I just wasn't right. popular, and you yeah. know, it's it's just the the kid things. Like when you're when you're growing up, and people find out you can sing, and, mm-hmm. and you know, me, I went to a predominantly black school, so. The light skinned girls always get picked on just because mm. you know they feel like we're better than everybody. It's it's, mm. it's a just a preconceived notion of us. I don't know. The light complexion girls. I always want to think be they, dark. Think they all that? Yeah, they do. That's what you think? They do say okay. that. Yeah, they say that a lot. So, um, but anyway, that's that's kind of how I grew up. I grew mm. up being picked on and stuff for my eye color. Mm. Um, just it's amazing. Before we wrap it up, it's amazing how. Um, that people could could judge by, you know, they try to judge. Well, she's she's like she light skinned, so she like this. And right. She dark skinned, so she not this. Why is that? I, I, you I know? think I think we're taught stereotypes. Mm-hmm. You know, like I because I I've never I've never looked at somebody and thought that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. Why people choose to Slave do that? I, I guess so. Yeah. But but we are taught to hey, if you see someone dressed like this, or if mm-hmm. you see someone, you know, and that's I have a song on my album called Cover Up, and it kind of hits on that because you know, okay, what would you do if you saw a, a hooker on the street? What would you do? What would you? Oh, you probably me? talk about it, right? You'd be like, <laughs> over, "Hey, girl, how long you been out here? Get home, put some damn clothes <laughs> on." <laughs> You. you know, and you my know, kids in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Honest response, you know, right? But most people, yeah, when they see that, they're like, "Oh, look at," especially women. Mm. Other women, they'll be like, "Look at her. That is a shame. That's just, you know, mm. that's ridiculous." But she, she, <laughs> she should be ashamed of herself and this and that. And you know, it is a sad sight to see, but you never, ever, ever know what made that person you know or what landed that person in that predicament you never know their life story you never yeah. know you know their the the journey they took there so i tell people all the time i'm like you know you cannot you cannot judge a book by its cover i i came to california and i met a girl and she was a porn star mm-hmm. and i who, talked who to her that? No, <laughs> don't, don't even go there. <laughs> but seriously, do we um, have her collection? Okay. I talked to her, and um, nobody in a, and I won't mention her name, but we were. I was taking this class mm-hmm. for a, a job. It was like an orientation, and nobody would talk to her because they knew what she did and they knew how she dressed oh, and all hate, that. Man, so I go over and talk to her, and we just we start hanging out every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one day she just breaks down in my arms and she cries and she tells me, you know, 
uh, you're so amazing, you know, I, I really wish that my life was like this, or this, blah, 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 blah. she starts telling me everything she's gone through. She had a mm. sister that was um, like 26 or 27 with a four-year-old mind. Um, she, her mother was in the streets and abandoned them really young. Her uncle, you know, uh, would bring people over and, and she, she was molested and raped mm. and all that. And so, you know, you never know, no, start, you never, like you said, you never know why. You never how. know. So, you yeah. know, for me to just look at someone and be like, you know, how could you even let yourself do that? You mm. know, it is something that I hope girls or women will eventually get out of but at the same time you know how how are you even gonna how are they even gonna get out of that if they never have somebody come along and say hey you're better than this mm -hmm. you know and uh, with love and not yeah. judgment yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so uh a song called cover up on my album i dedicated to the rape trauma victims and uh victims of domestic violence because a lot of times women especially judge other women you know the way i was treated by my ex-husband i was just like I mean, nobody's going to want me, especially if they find out about my past, especially if they find out about, you know, all this stuff that's happened. They're going to view me as used or damaged or, you know, but that was my mentality, you know. So um, you just you just never know. And so I have a soft spot in my heart for people like that. And even if they think they want to be there, they don't want nobody wants to do that. Yeah. And so and so so you're, you're not just a, a, a uh, entertainer, you're not just a singer. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, try I, hear, to yeah, I hear mentorship. Right. I, I hear motivational speaking. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 your heart is just, it's just, it shows. It's, you right. can feel it, and you're very sincere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. So I, the album is, it's got a lot of different songs for different people, yeah. and um, it, I dedicated a lot of them to on the booklet. I, I put the dedications on there, and it's just it's something for everybody. There's a song on there for the victims and survivors of police brutality. There's a song on there for the people who suffer from uh, severe anxiety. So it's just I I don't just make music to make that. music. The Porsche Renee, thank you so much for spending thank time you. with me today. We got it right here, man. The same soup show. <laughs>